Hi, my name is Igor and I am a developer of the Blockstream Satellite System and in this video I'm going to give an overview of the Blockstream Satellite Receiver Flow Graph in Guinea Radio. So the processing chain in the flow graph starts with the RTL SDR source block, which is this block right here. The goal of this block is to take the samples that are captured in the RTL SDR board and deliver into the Guinea Radio flow graph for processing. The next processing step in the chain is the so-called Automatic Gain Control or AGC. The main goal here is to normalize the incoming samples such that the output is within an expected range. And this is done here by essentially computing the root mean square and normalizing the incoming samples by the R mass value. The next processing step is this coarse frequency recovery block here, which is implemented by the FLL band edge block. The goal of the coarse frequency recovery is to shift the incoming signal band, which is expected to be offset from zero, and then place it around zero as much as possible. The offset the frequency offset of the incoming signal is very expected due to the fact that the oscillators in the RTL SDR and the LNB are not perfect. So the FLL detects the frequency offset and then shifts the signal. The next step is the symbol timing recovery block. Now to understand the goal, the goal of this block we have to understand the difference between samples and symbols. Essentially for every constellation symbol that we want to detect, we have a couple of samples. In the particular case of Blockset RX receiver, the default configuration is such that we have six samples for every symbol, namely we use an oversampling ratio of six. Now, at some point in the processing chain, we want to stop processing samples and then start processing symbols only. And this is what happens after this block here. Within six samples, only one of the six samples is actually the best symbol to use. This block here has the role of identifying this best symbol to use. The subsequent block is uh, this Costas loop block here, which is used in a somehow unusual way here. The goal of this Costas loop block here is to correct the remaining or the residual frequency offset that was not corrected by the FLL block before it. The reason why this is important is because it helps with this frame synchronization process. So following the Costas loop block we have the actual frame synchronizer. The goal of the frame synchronizer is to find within a sequence of symbols where does the frame begin. So we have a sequence of symbols which is organized into preamble and payload and the preamble is what the frame synchronizer tries to identify in order to identify where the frame begins. The output of the frame synchronizer is again the whole frame with preamble and payload but it also gives the next block a notion regarding which symbol pertains to the preamble and which symbol pertains to the payload. So it gives a notion of the boundaries such that the next block can operate on the preamble symbols a bit better. The next block then is the carrier phase recovery block which relies on knowledge of the preamble symbols and therefore is named data aided. So the goal of this block is to take the rotating symbols which are normal in the output of the symbol timing recovery block and stop their rotation such that they become stable clouds or constellation points and ultimately ready for constellation decoding. So after the carry phase recovery block we have the actual constellation decoder which essentially maps the constellation symbols into their corresponding bits. The bits are then separated such that we have a stream of bytes, each byte representing one single bit, and then those symbols are mapped between 1 and minus 1 such that the hard decoder inside this block can then decode. 
This is a turbo decoder, which operates on a default code rate of one third, meaning for every 18444 bits, there is an output of 6144 bits. So after the decoder, we have the descrambler. And the reason why we have the descrambler is because the transmitter itself scrambles the sequence of bits before transmitting. And that's just to prevent long sequence of bits being either 0 or 1, which could disturb the performance of the receiver. So once the sequence of bits is scrambled, we have the block that is on a higher layer and is the HDLC, the framer block. Now, this block here finds the header of the HDLC frame and then once it identifies the header, it tries to identify the whole payload, computes a CRC and then checks whether the CRC is the one that is advertised in the header such that it can check the integrity of the data. If the data is correct, then the HDLC the framer delivers the payload of the frame to the final block of the chain, which is the block set protocol sync. The sync block identifies whether the content of the HDLC payload is corresponding to API or the blockchain satellite API data or to normal blocks traffic. Depending on which one, it outputs to a given named pipe in the system. So this block here outputs the incoming data into two named pipes, one for API, the other for blocks data. Now, the difference between Blockset RX flow graph and the GUI one is that the GUI only adds a couple of cute GUI blocks from Guinea Radio, such as a frequency sync, a waterfall sync, a constellation sync, and so on. So all of these cute GUI blocks are connected to specific outputs in the flow graph such that we can visualize the metrics of interest and then interpret the performance of the system. So this was just an overview and there is a wiki page named Understanding the GUI in the Blockstream Satellite Repository on GitHub, which might be quite helpful for understanding the particular roles of the processing stages in the flow graph. I hope this was helpful.